In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God in heaven, we thank you for tonight. We bless your name because you've gathered us together so that we can conquer every full spiritual foe up and down, no matter where they are. By faith, we conquer tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray according to your promise that nothing shall be able to stand for us tonight in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, we'll march around the walls. And all those Jericho walls will fall down before us in Jesus' name. We do not know that there is any mountain that can receive the power, the authority of the name of Jesus. We do not know that there is any sickness, any infirmity, any bad luck, any curse, any yoke, anywhere that can withstand the name of mighty Jesus. Therefore, Lord, we come in that name tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus. You conquered the devil at the cross on Calvary. You pronounced it and you said it is finished. And tonight, it is finalized. Lord, we pray everyone will win the victory tonight in Jesus' name. As I stand here, Lord, I stand in your name. And I stand in the power of the Holy Ghost. And I refuse to give recognition to anything that will resist the name of my Lord. Therefore, I stand here in victory. And I bring victory to your children tonight in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray impossibilities will become possible. The dreams you have given your children will become a reality. Lord, we pray none of us will miss the miracle you want to give tonight. Ours is the victory. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said... If you are happy tonight, can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. In Exodus chapter 17, we're talking tonight about conquering. Conquering through faith. And there is this story you must have heard before if you're a reader of the Bible. That we have in Exodus chapter 17. But uh, there is something I need to point to you there. In Exodus 17, verse 8, then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did. As Moses had said to him, and he fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and all went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And he took his stone and put it under him, and he searched thereon. And Aaron and all stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the came down of the sun. And Joshua discomforted that means defeated. That means overwhelmed in another version. Over, he overthrew the Amalekites. All these people with the edge of the sword. I don't have enough time to dwell on that passage tonight. But I need to tell the younger generation, the Joshua's of today, that as mighty, as excited, exuberant, energetic, as young Joshua today might be, as gifted and talented, equipped for battle, as the Joshua of today might be, they need cooperation with the Moses 
that is given to them. Because, you know, Moses told Joshua, he said, look at these Amalekites. And by the way, you know that Joshua was the one to succeed Moses. And Joshua didn't know that yet. But Joshua was being prepared. And this is the very first time we're coming across Joshua. And it's like Joshua was being prepared for the battle he will face when he got to the land of Canaan. Because Joshua was to experience the victory in the time of Moses. And then after Moses, he was to continue experiencing the victory. And so Moses said, get men after you. And then go before them in battle against the Amalekites. And I will go to the mountain top. And then I'll be cooperating with you there. And so Joshua went to the battlefield. And as Joshua went to the battlefield, he didn't understand. Because the Amalekites were being destroyed. He, did, he couldn't look back. And Moses was so far away on the mountain top. But it was as the hand was Moses was up. Lifted to the Almighty God, saying, Lord, we recognize you. We recognize your power. We recognize your plan. We recognize your authority. We recognize not by might, not by power, by your spirit, says the Lord. We know you are the God of battle, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisai, the, the Lord Abana. We recognize that you are the one doing it. As Moses lifted up his hand like that, young Joshua was defeating the Amalekites when his hands went down. Joshua was surprised. What's happening here? And then the Amalekites were defeating them. And Joshua must have been wondering. He didn't understand. And neither do the Joshuas of today, the young people of today know that there is a parking. There is an authority behind those excited, enthusiastic, exuberant young people. That there are some older people here that God has given the vision and the plan and the authority. And as they are in cooperation with you, in fellowship with you, and rec they recognize that you Joshua's are there on the battlefield and they are happy with you and they're lifting up their hands while you are there on the battlefield although you may think it's not with you on your battlefield he doesn't know what you are facing of course he knows it's as there is that two-way traffic interaction fellowship that you're getting the victory and then Aaron and all, they understood. They knew, and they saw the correlation. And they saw that the news they were hearing from the battlefield, when the hand of this man was up, victory. When his hands were heavy, tired, weary, weak, and his hands went down, no victory again. So they said, there's something we're going to do here. We thought, or his companions before. But even though we thought we were his companions, we not doing anything. Oh, yes, Aaron, what do you think we're going to do? Put a stone here. Let this man sit down, old man, more than 80 years of age now, probably more than 100. And you lift up this hand here. I will lift up this hand here. Let's bear the burden with him. And then he did that. And the hands of Moses became steady. It's to your joy. It's to your victory. When the hand of your leader is up and steady. There's nothing funny. When the hands of your leader are down, weak. There's nothing exciting. When the hands of your leader are weak. And he can't lift up the hands anymore. You'll be the loser for it. And so Aaron and all, they understood. If we are going to conquer, see the victory of Joshua on the battlefield, 
is not for Joshua, it's for the whole land of Israel, and it's for the glory of God. So they realize cooperation, fellowship, friendship, understanding, support, that is what will give the Joshua there on the field, what will give him the victory that he needs. And I invite you tonight, I invite you to victory. And it doesn't matter the number of the Amalekites there, you are going to win the victory. Yeah. It doesn't matter the experience. They tell us those Amalekites have been warriors for a long time. And these Israelites coming out of Egypt, they were slaves. They didn't know how to fight. In fact, Pharaoh denied them the learning of how to be warriors because he was afraid if these people became strong, they might join our enemies and fight against Egypt and they will defeat us. Because of that, they were denied military training when they were in Egypt. But because there's a man there on the mountain top and his hand was steady, our hands will be steady. Yeah. And no matter the problem you have, no matter the headache and heartache you have, and no matter the Amalekites running after you, <laughs> tell the person next to you, I have the victory tonight. tonight. Tell them if you are very, very sure, tell them in a very sure way, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have, you have the victory tonight. In Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 verse 37, it says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Here Paul the Apostle told the Romans, I'm sure you understand the time of the Romans. You have Nero, you have all these people fighting against the Christian faith, imprisoning the people they could imprison. But then Paul the Apostle told the Romans, he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amalekites, Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites, where are they coming from? Where do they get their power? If God be for us, who can be against us? Then he says, we are more than conquerors. In fact, he lists seven things in verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? One, tribulation. Two, distress. Three, Persecution, four, farming, five, nakedness, six, peril, seven, sword. It's in the midst of all that you search. In all these things, whatever it is, militating against the people of God, we, the children of God, the believers, we are more than conquerors. And then he didn't even stop there because he's telling us that faith, connects us with the Almighty God, and as nothing can defeat the Almighty God, nothing can defeat you. Yeah. No yoke will remain in your life. Yeah. No curse will remain in your life. Yeah. In this troubled world, you are going to have the victory in Jesus' name. Yeah. You, you know what he says? He says, by faith, we walk through. He says, Number one, I'm reading now from verse 38. It said, because for I am persuaded that neither death, number one, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death and you will not die. Yeah. Not life. Number two, the circumstances and differing, different various circumstances of life. You will walk through life and you will walk into your victory. Yeah. And then he tells us things present or things to come. In fact, we'll be climbing heights and descending depths. He says, in fact, we're going to confront angels and we're going to confront principalities and even powers. And then after he mentioned everything he could ever mention, and he said, any other creature in the midst of that all, we're going to be victorious. Yeah. That's what we came to celebrate tonight. We came to celebrate your victory. Yeah. And we came to announce to the world that you, that I'm looking at tonight, as an individual, that you, you are victorious in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
now you begin to make your plans like a victorious person. You know, there are people that make plans as if, you know, they're defeated people. They'll never have enough. They'll never do enough. They'll never get enough. They'll never experience enough. And uh, they say, well, I, I can barely live. And that's how they make their plans. But tonight, you begin to make your plans as if, if you knew that nothing can stop you. And you knew that mountain you want to climb, that destination you want to reach, if you knew without a shadow of doubt that you are going to reach there and nobody can double cross you or hinder you, what kind of plan will you make? That's what I'm calling you to tonight. You are going to have the victory. Yeah. Three elements or three parts to the message tonight. Number one, conquering the devil and demons through faith. Conquering the devil and demons through faith. Uh, do you know that uh, the greatest, the highest powers that unbelievers fear, you already have victory over those powers in Jesus' name. In First Peter chapter 5, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a running lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Resist steadfast in the faith. Say no to the devil. He has to run away from you. Because he doesn't have that power, that authority, to destroy your life. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy but i christ said i am come that you may have life you'll have that life yeah. and to have it how i said how oh, what are you doing then living at the edge of the provision of the christian faith when the lord says you will have life and you will have it more abundantly that abundant life has come to you tonight yeah. in mark chapter 16 verse 17 mark 16 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe are the believers here tonight these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall. I said it shall. It shall not hurt them. Then it says they shall lay their hands on the sick. And they shall die. They shall do what? you will recover Amen. i said you will recover Amen. the blessings of the lord will follow after your life Amen. victory will follow you Amen. in romans chapter 16 verse 20 romans 16 verse 20 and the god of peace shall bruise satan satan under my feet ah i said under my own under your feet shortly it will be so in jesus name and did you see that the lord has given you victory over devils and over demons and when you rise up tonight you'll not be saying i'm unlucky i'm weak i'm powerless look at what these demons are doing why do you publicize those demons and you give them authority that they do not have they don't have authority over you, you have authority over them. Yeah. Point number two, conquering discouragement and despair through faith. You know, there are many people, they, they just go through life. I don't know what I will do tomorrow. No sunshine in their face. Everything is gloomy and dull. They don't even know whether they want to eat or whether they want to take their bath, whether they want, they want to go to, for lectures. Discouraged. Discouraged. No discouragement tonight. Yeah. I said no discouragement tonight. Yeah. Conquering discouragement and despair through faith. You know, Paul had been there. In fact, he tells us from his own experience. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, if you think that you've gone through some things in your life, that has brought discouragement, listen to Paul the Apostle. In 2 Corinthians 1, 8, 9, and 10. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant 
of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, is so much that we despaired even of life. But we are the saints of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the day, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver, in whom we trust, he will yet deliver us. Here Paul the Apostle talked about despair, distress, discouragement. But he said, oh, we trust in God. In fact, all the seas came to us so that we will not trust in ourselves. And God has helped us. I like this verse 10. And you need to mark it in your Bible. Because it has the word deliver in the past tense, in the present tense, in the future tense. Look at it. Who delivered us past from so great a death. And then present now. And does deliver in the present tense. At the present time. No matter what we are going through today. He delivers. And then in the future. It says, in whom we trust, that he will yet deliver us from all your past troubles, he'll deliver you tonight. Yeah. From your present predicament, he will deliver you. Yeah. And if any other thing comes after this very day, he will continue to deliver you. Yeah. He tells us hey, about the discouragement and the distress and the things he went through in chapter 4. Chapter 4 of that same Second Corinthians, verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Yes, trouble is there, but it's not the end of the road. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Yes, and there are some paradoxes of life that came upon us. So we just couldn't understand, we couldn't analyze what was happening, yet not in despair. Verse 9, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Why? How, Paul, how did you go through all that and yet not destroyed, not in despair? How did you go through all that and yet you could still keep your victory, not cast down, not forsaken? For certain, we, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed. Therefore, have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. It says, oh, it's because of faith, we believed and we spoke, and what we declared by faith came out and was fulfilled. If you will do the same thing tonight and put words to your faith, declaration of your faith, and say, yes, those problems came, those problems were there, but... I'm not going to be defeated by those things. I'm going to conquer everything. Do you know tonight you are going to conquer? Yes. And they tell me about that yoke. They tell me about that cause. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to overcome. Do you know you are going to overcome? Yes. In Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Here Paul the Apostle said he had a son in the flesh. You don't try to guess what a son in the flesh was. Just a son in the flesh. Paul, what is it, son in the flesh? How do you feel? Just like you feel son in the flesh. Is it this? Is it that? No speculation. Son in the flesh. And then he went to the Lord. And as he went to the Lord, he said, Lord, how about this? Will this son in the flesh... Will it not hinder your purpose for my life? Never. There is no son in the flesh that ever will come to a child of God that will hinder the final accomplishment of what God wants in that life. And there is no demon, there is no sickness, there is no problem that ever can come to a child of God that will not allow the problem that he gave to Joseph and in life to be fulfilled later in life. Paul, go ahead. I am with you. My grace is sufficient for you. 
Oh, what a wonderful thing that, although nothing may inconvenience you, but cannot really destroy you, the plan of your life will be fulfilled, the goal of your life will be fulfilled, the destination of your life you will reach. Let all the demons multiply, cross the way, put the roadblocks there, let them do anything they want to do. As you just set your eyes on the goal that God has put before you, you will march through. Yeah. Because God has given us the victory. And so he said, Paul, every epistle you are supposed to write, you will write in spite of that son in the flesh. Not a jot, not a title, not a word, not a letter. Out of all the epistles you ought to write, not a jot will be missing just because of son in the flesh. My grace is sufficient for you. You need to just square your shoulders and screw, understand the plan of God, the goodness of God. And then just go on, just go on. Do what you need to do because the devil has not been able to manufacture any problem in this life that can detract, subtract from the plan of God for your life. As I look at you and as you accept this word of God and you relax and you know that no matter any story they are telling you in the village, anything they are telling you that, you know, this may happen, this may happen, brush it aside, you will reach your goal. Yeah. My grace is sufficient for you, he said. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ is upon you tonight. Yeah. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses. For Christ's sake, because for when I am weak, then am I strong. Are you strong? Yes. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians 4, verse 13. You read this after I finish reading it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Won't you go? Do you really believe you can do all things? Yes. Or you believe that Satan, demons, sickness, circumstances of life will hinder you and you will not be able to do all things? No, never. From tonight, let it be settled in your heart that God makes you more than a conqueror through faith and you will do all things. We'll see you if Jesus tarries. I'll see you again. Yes. You will tell me stories of victory. Testimonies you will tell us in the area of your healing, in the area of your deliverance, in the area of your victory, in the area of walking over the enemy. If any enemy stands on the way, spiritual or whatever, and you keep on walking, when you get there, there's going to be a power coming from on high that will make that fellow to fall down. You walk over them and walk to where you need to get to in Jesus' name. The next time you see me, you'll tell me the word of God cannot be broken. Scripture cannot be broken. You express it just like that. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Number three is conquering disease and death through faith. Conquering disease and death through faith. You know, and there are people that have got some, uh, some problems. And once those problems remain there for a day or two or a week or a year or three years or seven years or ten years and the thing has not been removed and they, they convince themselves that the thing that sits so long now and I don't think this thing can be removed anymore but it doesn't matter how long that problem has remained you get the victory tonight yeah. conquering disease and death through faith in Mark chapter 5 Mark chapter 5, verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, 12 long years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, 
and had spent all that she had, and it was nothing better, rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press, in the crowd behind, and he touched his garments. Will you touch the Lord tonight? Yes. If you will touch the Lord by faith, you just, at the time of prayer, you just close your eyes and visualize because Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You visualize this there and you stretch out your hand of faith and say, yes, Lord Jesus, I touch you. I touch you. My problems are over. My sickness is gone. My infirmity is gone. All the harassment, torment of the devil, everything is gone. Barrenness is gone. Failure is gone. Because I touch Jesus tonight. You will touch him. Yeah. We're told, when she heard of Jesus, she came in the crowd in the prison and he, she touched his garments. And for she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole and straightway. The fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. That thing that had stayed there for 12 years, everything vanished away. Yeah. Has God changed? Oh. No, my God can never change. The same yesterday, today, forever. God has not changed. That's the reason why he's touching you tonight. That's the reason why it's destroying the power of sickness and death in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Conquering disease and death through faith. You know there are people that they, they carry with them negative prophecies. Somebody had told them, maybe a white garment prophet or any other kind of prophet, I told them that uh, they will not finish the education, that something was going to happen and they were going to die. And the prophet had tried to prove it to them. Don't you remember the way it happened to your, you know, older brother? And don't you remember the way it happened to so and so? Don't you look at your family as they reach this age and as they're about to make something in life? Don't you know the pattern that has always been? And don't you know that is coming to you? It, that's not for you. Yeah. In 2 Kings chapter 20, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. In those days was Ezekiel seek unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And Isaiah was speaking with assurance, with certainty. And he said, Ezekiah, I'm not going to even to pray on this one, because God sent me to you and told me to tell you, set your house in order. The end has come for you. Then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord. When things get so bad like that, that even a prophet, a well-known prophet, a trusted prophet, a Bible-based prophet, when he tells you that things are so bad, the end has come. When somebody comes to tell you the dream they had about you, and they tell you, you know, that, you know, we, we don't tell you anything that we're not sure of. I dreamt about so-and-so. That's what happened. I dreamt about so-and-so. It happened exactly. And I will not be faithful to God if I didn't come to tell you this dream, although it's negative, but I have to be faithful to God. Look at what God said. What's your attitude? You then fold up, pack up your books, say bye-bye to your friends. The end has come. I cannot make it, you will make it. Yeah. I said, you will make it in Jesus' name. In verse 3, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember me now, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiel wept so, and it came to pass after Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of God came to him saying, turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, thou dost say the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. 
What else are we looking for? I have heard thy prayer. What other word do you want to hear? I have heard your prayer. God said, Isaiah, you told him negative. Go back and tell him positive. I have heard your prayers. And then it says, behold, I will heal thee. I will heal thee. Yeah. On the Sunday, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. I will add unto thy days how many years? Yeah. See what prayer can do. This, see what faith in God can do. That the faith we have, the power of God, the authority that comes to a child of God, that authority can speak to that agent of death and say, stop right there. In fact, don't only stop, go back one year, not enough, go back again, go back again, and keep commanding that thing until the Lord's will is fulfilled in your life. And all the years he wants to add to your life, you will have everything in Jesus' name. And then God said, not only that, to give you 15 years, I will deliver you and this city out of the hands of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my sake and for my servant's sake. You, you see what prayer can do? And when you really trust in the Lord and you believe in the Lord, and you know that when you strike a deal with the Lord, on the basis of his unfailing, unchanging world, there is nothing that can stop the power of that prayer. And tonight, you are going to have the victory. Yeah. I said tonight, you are going to have the victory. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't only, only Zekiah that had such an experience. Turn to the Psalms and turn to Psalm 118. 118. And I'm reading there in verse 17. It says, I shall not die. Everybody, can you say that? I shall not die. Once again, I shall not die. I shall not die. But live and declare the works of the Lord. You know, when you really understand the promises of the Lord, which are yes and amen to all the children of God, when there's any sickness, when there's any infirmity, you can stand in the faith through the name of Jesus and through the authority that he has given to you. And you can declare whatever the sickness may be, whatever the affliction may be, I shall not die. But I will leave so that I can declare all the words of the Lord. I've told you tonight, number one, you have victory over the devil. And you have victory over the demons. You have victory over discouragement. You have victory over despair. You have victory over disease. You have victory even over death. Now, for you to understand how you come on that victory ground and you become more than a conqueror in all these things, whatever may happen in your life. And tonight, when you stand to pray, you pray with the authority of the name of Jesus in the power of the Holy Ghost according to the promises of the Lord which will never fail. You see the way other people claimed the promises of the Lord? And they didn't allow anything to, you know, kind of beat them back, fold their hands, weaken their hands. And they will say, maybe it's not for me, it's for everybody. I said it's for you. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. I'm reading to you from verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid every day daily at 
the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple as an arms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, when John said, look on us. Look away from your paralysis. Look on us. Look away from your problems. Look on us. Look away from all those negative things, all the attacks, all the afflictions. Look on us. You know, the direction in which you're looking can determine the things you get. The direction in which you're looking. If you're looking at, you know, your circumstances and you're looking at the sickness and you're looking at, you know, the problems you have and you're thinking and meditating on how long this thing has been, when will I ever come out, out of this? And you get into self-pity. Looking at the things you shouldn't be looking at. Look on us. Look away from your problem. Look up here. And then it says, and it gave heed unto them expecting to receive something are you expecting to receive something yes. i said are you expecting to receive something yes. expecting to receive something of them then peter said silver and gold abide none lame man how do you feel silver and gold abide none as lame man as your attention now decreased do you give Peter and John the same kind of attention you give to the people that have silver and gold? Now that Peter declares unto you, silver and gold are buying on, do you give Peter the same attention that you give to the people that have silver and gold? Or his declaration, what he has said, has not discouraged you? Look on all, silver and gold are buying on. Do you give me the same attention that you give to your lecturers teaching you those subjects? Here we are, this lecturer on the timetable, and everybody knows and he knows. He, he, that, that lecture ought to have been from 9 till 11. See this lecturer. 9 till 11, he came quarter after 10. And everybody sits, sits up, and then you pay attention, and you don't question him. One hour, 15 minutes late, what's the matter? You give attention because of what you are going to get. Lemon, I'm asking you, are you giving Simon Peter the same attention that you used to give those people passing by with silver and gold? Look on us here. We don't have silver and gold, but something more than silver. Something more than gold. And the layman paid attention. And the layman did not think of any other thing. I'm asking you students here, when your lecturers come to class and are teaching you something, what kind of attention do you give them? Do you try to hurry up that lecturer when you know that what you bring out of that college, that institution, depends on what this lecturer is giving you? Give me more attention. So the lame man looks on Peter, and then as Peter said, what I have, I give unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, power came. I said power came. Yeah. Hey, you know, if you just center your attention and affection on the word of God, and you are not a wishy-washy Christian, and uh, you're not a kind of Christian that, you know, a little thing you cannot endure and you cannot pay attention anymore. If you will center your attention on the word of God tonight, your victory, even the devil will be surprised. Yeah. I said, even the devil will be surprised. Yeah. And then he said, as he said, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand and he lifted him up. 
And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, and he leaping up stood and watched and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. It will happen to you. Yeah. It will be unto you according to your faith in Jesus' name. Yeah. You have the victory. Yeah. Before you claim that victory, Luke chapter 10. I'm reading to you verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. How many of you have that power already? I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. They will not walk over you again. They will not crawl in your body again. They will not get your brain anymore. Because now tonight, you had it before. Maybe you didn't get it before. Tonight you are getting it. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over, over what? Over what? Why are these believers running away from witches and wizards? Why are these believers running from fellowship to fellowship? Where are you coming from? I'm coming from the fellowship over there. What are you running from? Yeah, there is a witch there, and I'm running from her. Poor you. You will not run from witches and wizards anymore. They will run from you now in Jesus' name. Because it says, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. It is so. I said it is so. I said it is so. Because the word of the Lord for you, my brother, my sister, my child tonight is, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. I said no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. How many of you are conquering tonight? Overcoming tonight? You are really very, very, very sure? Why don't you rise up? He has given you power. He has given you authority. And you are going to overcome. He has given you that power. You are going to overcome. It says, I give unto you power. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. You have victory over demons, over devils. The victory over discouragement. Victory over despair. Victory over disease. And victory over death. Claim your victory. Claim your victory. It's there. It's for you. mention the name of Jesus, no demon can remain there, no disease can remain there, no evil power, no cause, no yoke can remain there. The name of Jesus is mighty enough to destroy all the works of the devil. The victory is yours. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. More than conquerors. More than conquerors. More than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Give himself for us.
Beetle. In Jesus' name we pray. Have a testimony tonight. Raise up your hand. You have a testimony tonight. Raise up your hand. You believe. You believe. You believe. The promises of the Lord will never fail. You believe that there is nothing, no power from hell, no power from the river, no power from anywhere can defeat or conquer you anymore. You believe. You believe. Raise up your hand in victory. I know that you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. And that victory is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Your hands up, your eyes closed, victory has come your way. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you tonight because Jericho walls are falling before your children in Jesus' name. All the Jericho walls of any form of hindrance, they will fall tonight before them in Jesus' name. Every curse upon anyone here, coming from anyone, coming from the paths of darkness, or from principalities and powers, any curse, any yoke on anyone here, like the walls of Jericho fell down flat, I command, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. The yoke, the hindrance, the things, the chain, tie them down. That they are just being merry-go-round and they have not been able to get the victory. They have not been able to move forward. That yoke by the anointing, I break it tonight in Jesus' name. Give my brother there the breakthrough. Give my sister there the breakthrough. I pray, Lord, where the hindrances have been before them and they have not been able to move forward, and they have not been able to achieve what they ought to achieve. I remove that crossroad, I remove that stumbling block now, and I pray, breakthrough will come to them in Jesus' name. And Lord, the sicknesses and diseases in their body, whatever the name, HIV, AIDS, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. That appendicitis, the appendicitis person there, I'm asking right now, oh Lord, touch that individual instantaneously, be healed in Jesus' name. The pile over there, I command right now, that the mighty power of God will come upon you. Be healed in Jesus' name. That young man there that is bringing up blood, whenever you go to the toilet, I pray right now that situation is arrested, and I command that unition of blood, come out in Jesus' name. The asthma there that almost took your life the other time, I pray that the mighty hand of the Lord will come upon you now. That asthma disease, I pray, be healed in Jesus' name. The tuberculosis there, be healed in Jesus' name. Every sickness causing pain in their body, every infirmity, every deformity. I pray, Lord, you lay your mighty hand upon them right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. The swelling on your body, the anger there. I pray the Lord will touch you right now. And I command, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, the brain problem. That will not allow them to concentrate. Just reading for a few minutes, then uh, the brain is tired, and the brain can continue again. I command that disorder in your brain. I command everything to be rectified, be healed in Jesus' name. And all those things walking about in the body, harassing you, tormenting you, torturing your life. I command right now that the mighty name of the Lord that is pronounced over you will drive away. All the works of the devil and all the sins walking about, be free, be delivered in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the deformity in the legs and the hands and the waist, I pray that your mighty hand will touch them right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. The blindness and dimness of sight, I pray the Lord will touch you right now. 
Open your eyes and see in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray whatever needs are there, I pray that you will touch them. Yes. You grant them the request. Yes. Set your people free in Jesus' name. Yes. In the area of their academics, in the area of provision, in the area of whatever need they have. So that they will be able to be and do and achieve what you want them to be to do and to achieve. Do it for them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray there will be no impossibility before them anymore. Let the possible become a reality. Let impossibilities vanish. Lord, I pray, whatever miracle it is anybody is believing you for here tonight, grant it unto them in Jesus' name. Pray that your name will be glorified. Let them have the joy of being more than conquerors. I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we are the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Tell me who is the part you oppose. Sing like you really want to sing. In the name of Jesus, we are the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, tell me who has the power to your place.